And he says, how did you? There will be 50 people give $1,000 and do it right now or I am finished. Thor. And he's welcome to another sinner's commentary character study on dark side field dsp himself with every video i preface that i am not a person who hates dark side field i don't want to see his demise i don't want to see him uh crash and burn i take no solace or happiness or joy in seeing this man's life as miserable as it plays out uh, in front of all of us, um, I do seek that. I do believe that he can be saved. I do believe that we could learn something from him as we go through this process. And the sinner's commentary does not; it's not exclusive to just Dark Side Field. But he just happens to be the, unfortunately, he just happens to be the the poster child of exactly what we should not be doing at any time in our life. Um, not just because he's a streamer, the fact that he is actually like the fact that we get to see his character like unfold live when he does, um, his streams. And then of course, when we do our playbacks. So, um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ for giving me this opportunity to be able to speak with you guys today, because I had to pray about going into this field and going into this area. Um, because it is a very hostile area. It does. Uh, it is very vitriol. It's very ferocious. And what I mean by that is that the the detractor community are some very passionate, um, decent souls, um, excluding of course the trolls. But they seek to un you know to uncover and to protect those that are being taken advantage of by dark side Phil. Um, so my hats off to them. Uh, if, you know, if not for them, I would not be here today to understand and be able to just see just how pitiful that this man's, um, soul has become. And, and somewhere down the road, it began at a very young age and we were not privy to his childhood. But we do get to see the after effects or, or remind you, or maybe a better way to say it, we get to see what what came of his childhood as we see it today. So with that being said, buckle up. This episode is about his alleged back injury. And um, so let's go ahead and see just... And we're going to expose it. The, the, the sad part about why people do these kind of injuries and things of that nature is is beyond me. But I know for his reasoning, well, we're going to get to that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and see what this unfolds as the underfaker uh, discusses how his back got hurt. How did your back injury start? Um, I've talked about this in the past, but it was quite a long time ago. So I figured this may be a time to get everybody up to speed on what's going on with my back. I have a severely herniated disc between my L4 and L5 vertebrae in my back, okay? It's not so... Now, I've had to go deep dive into exactly what a herniated disc, like what it is, how it happens, and his particular injury, injury which is in his L4 and L5. And after reading and re and by the way, this is the video that I have struggled to get done that what it, my Chromebook crashed. And then from there, it's just been a, t a fight to get this video. So the video that was actually much longer th than that, but when that was lost, this one is, is shorter, which I think is probably a better product than down the road. So that way I don't take up too much of your time. But of course, I'm long winded. I like to explain things, so it it may not <laughs> we may I may not save too much of your time of your day. However, if you're spending time with me, thank you so much. And if you've seen previous videos, thank you so much for the support and the comments. Again, you may not believe the way I do, but I think we can all learn at least from a Christian's perspective what's going on in this man's mind. 
Um, so let's get back to the underfaker and his injury. Now, keep in mind, a herniated disc in your L4 or L5 is a pretty, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be rude to dark side, Phil. I'm not trying to be a jerk to dark side. Yeah, well, I am a jerk. Um, but we get, to, we get to have a conversation about exactly what goes on when that injury happens. So let's, let him, let's listen to him explain. Listen to the underfaker explain. Thing that happened immediately, it was like I had a car accident, someone hit me in the back, I fell. It was nothing like that whatsoever. It was a gradual thing over the course of my life. It was one that in itself should give us, that's a huge red flag. That is a huge red flag. Why would you say that? Because herniated discs, there's a series of things that happens uh, when a herniated disc uh, can happen. Okay, so from what I've read, and I've done a, um, more reading than is probably I think I've ever should have, but I did learn a lot of great things. I'm not going to sit there and tell you I didn't. I did learn a lot of things about your back injuries. I've learned a lot of things about uh, proper posture, um, things of that nature. So that's pretty cool to kind of learn and kind of get some insight into that. Plus, it's not it doesn't do any good if I get on here and just tell you, oh, his, he's faking his back injury because Phil is stupid, you know, things like that. No, that's not doesn't work. We got to stick with the truth. We got to stick with. And then, of course, some of this is some of this is going to be speculation because I don't 100 percent know if he actually has his back injury. However, I suspect that he's lying about it because of just how long he sits on his streams and how long he sits. Uh, and then of course, when he is animated, he sure doesn't like wince or go, Oh my God. Or no, there is like, there is, it's almost like the back injury only shows itself when someone brings it up. So it's like they have to come back to the memory. Then he has to fill in the blanks. Um, what, what about what happens? So it's kind of like, uh, hey man, didn't you didn't you have a didn't you have a missing leg? Oh yeah, well this one is a fake leg, but it's also was made out of a uh, Similac juice and an ostrich neck. It is a hundred percent biodegradable. Uh, I bought it, you know that kind of thing. Because you know if you start jumping around on stream and you're saying you only have one leg, that doesn't look right. Because you should have a, an awkward angle. But that's, um. That's pretty much what happens with, you know, when you when you fake injuries like this. So um, let's t let's 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 finish going on. Of course, there's going to be some image. There's going to be some cutscenes in here to try to get us to little laugh a little bit, because we have to laugh when we're going into this man's dark psyche. It's pretty gross to stay in there at long term on anything. I don't, there are detractors that can sit in there for days and maybe they have stronger fortifications of their mental state. Fantastic for you, brothers and sisters. I'm not that guy. This guy gets on my nerves to the point where I want to choke him. So let's go ahead and look at let's go ahead and listen to the video and then we'll be right back with some common things that goes on with a herniated disc. Hey, it was the summertime and I was actually playing uh, touch football right there what causes a herniated disc injury occupation individuals with physically demanding jobs or pastimes that involve pushing pulling or twisting are prone to herniated disc any repetitive activity that strain the spine can cause them. Unsafe lifting technique. People should always apply force from the legs, not the back, when lifting anything. Not touch football. <laughs> the most non-contact sport you can do is what Phil is claiming calls a herniated disc. Child, please. He said that he was playing touch football. <laughs> I'm sorry. He was <laughs> he was playing touch football. And he, 
the most non that's like saying you got injured <laughs> by a nerf gun <laughs> That's like saying you got sidelined and bushwhacked by a water balloon. That's like, <laughs> Philip, you, you want us to believe that you got a, wait a minute, I'll let him finish because the way he, none of this makes any sense, but I just had, if you're not going to be a, if you're not going, if you're not good at lying, just don't lie. Just, just don't. It's horrible. A bad liar is horrible. I'm not saying liars are good, but I'm saying at least you should be like, damn, I can't believe you lied to me versus, come on, man, really? Touch football. I think the most you can get from touch football is grass burn. Now, you might, I mean, no one is hitting you at all. That's why it's called touch football or grab ass for the flag is what I like to call it. Now, unless somehow, well, he could be so severely out of shape that maybe any strenuous exercise of getting up and taking six steps without having to, you know, without some kind of food product that he's reaching for. Uh, let's just be honest. The underfaker can't do that. He just, he's, you can't tell me that he said to me, well, I used, when my younger days, I was more athletic. You, in this video, he wasn't that old. Matter of fact, I know I'm still able to play touch football <laughs> without any real complaints. You know, I think any one of you guys or girls listening can play touch football and not end up with a herniated disc because of and remember, he said it wasn't instantaneous. It was a gradual thing. Since we know he doesn't have a job, when he had the situation, whatever job he had, it wasn't physically demanding. And let's be honest, in no way playing video games is a physically demanding pastime in a sense where you're getting into contact you know, injuries where you're getting slammed into each other day after day. You're not ramming, you know, football players. You don't think about the, um, the, the defensive line and the offensive line. No one ever think, well, you probably do, but no one ever really thinks about when they hear that crunch in the beginning, those are helmets. That was a spine on spine, helmet on helmet collisions. And we're talking about two grown 300 pound men running about a four or five. I mean, they could chase us down. These are well-trained athletes, warriors, gladiators. They get herniated disc. J.J. Watt had to play with a herniated disc. Just a good, you know, I'm a, I'm a Texas boy, so I got a shout out to herniated disc. There are players who play with herniated discs the entire season and never tell a soul because they don't want to come out of the game. Clearly, Dark Side Phil didn't do his research. He might have got on WebMD, read some things, and said, "Man, this is gonna be this will this will be an idea what I could use." Now, let's ask the question first before we answer, we get a definitive answer why he's making this injury. Because I I don't have any proof to say that he's lying, but I could tell you this much: he's lying. So, anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get back into the video. Herniated disc, flag football. Was a mine in a park. It was like a, a holiday a gathering. I believe it was someone's birthday, and they were having like grilling out dogs and burgers and everything. We were oh, it's a shit Oh, it's a shit You got no friends. I touch football. <laughs> And we're playing. This is the thing. I used to do this stuff all the time. I used to be a more athletic person. I used to actually run around a lot and do a lot of this stuff. I used to lift weights when I was much younger. Can anybody with a straight face say that Philip had friends at all? Lifting weights. You know, the thing about lifting weights, because I go to the gym um, and... There, I took like three years, four years almost to um, just life catch up, 
got lazy, um, spent more time at work than, than didn't make any time in between for gym. Cause you got to make time just much like reading the Bible, which I do. You have to make time for the things that you love, whether that's spending time with your family, spending time on video games. Yeah. You got to make time for video games. You do. Well, you have to be negligent or just not have a desire to you, or you want to ignore your responsibilities, I, you know, whatever. But you got to make time for things like physical activities. That takes an allotment of time because you're going someplace to do something strenuous. And you, you, it just is. You have to to take time. Now, you probably say, wait a minute, read the Bible's not strenuous. Oh, it's spiritually strenuous because you got to remember it has to, it's exposing what we want to deny. I don't want to believe in that. I don't want to believe it. Well, you see the, if you don't want to believe in sin, I get it. I trust me. I understand. However, you can't escape its symptoms, school shootings, uh, rage kills, um, abuse, uh, rape, uh, child molestation. You well, that's evil. E sin's roots. What was, what a sin's first and only fruit is evil that means from the from the the lie that we tell or to the disobedient to parents our arrogant you name it the very deny that i want that god is going to tell me i'm a sinner and i don't believe in him and yet we do everything that bible tells us we do we do them i'm just confronting the truth with the truth again you ain't got to believe what i'm telling you but i'm telling you it's right. Why am I saying that? Why am I coming up with this? Because here's Philip, the embodiment of what it is to be a sinner and unrepentant at this point. If ever he repented of it. He didn't go to Catholic school, but I guarantee he spent the majority of his time in the cafeteria. I guarantee it. The one thing that Phil can't run from is his conscience. Because all the tales of him lying, if you ever noticed, every time he tells he's about to get into this long narrative that he's not what he wasn't prepared to give because he didn't remember the lie very well, he starts rubbing that thing called a goatee. Y'all ever noticed that? He'll start rubbing it, looking away from the camera. Notice if he was thinking about something, he would be looking up. I think it's up into the left, I believe. Was a hardy brand. I think it's up to the left. I'm, look, I know it's one. One is left. One is right. One is one, one hemisphere is where you're thinking of things that are factual, and the other where you're thinking of things that's more imaginative. You know, more of your your cognitive side of where your your dream your your dreams your your um, your your the part where you can elaborate and think and your creative sense feels looking down because this is part of man. I, this is an involuntary look of shame. Look at his face. Look where he's looking away. That's a child when you catch a child in a lie. Tell me that's not a child's face. Put your fingers up, cover the hat up, right? Look at his face and tell me that's not a kid looking away from the camera, which is authority. Tell me that's not a child right there. Look at his, look at his shoulders. Look at his posture. All of which has no confidence in what he's saying. None of it. He's shifty. Not, are those pantyhose over there on the, on the left? Did this dude get caught? Is that pantyhose? What is that? Yeah, wait a minute. Are those, is that pigtail hair? He, that might be hair that he puts in to look like pigtail. You know, I'm not getting this man's fetishes. So, you can tell he's lying. You can tell without a shadow of a doubt this dude is doing some scummy lying. Scummy. But we do have some insight. He did say something that we could give or maybe it could be worth it. We, we know the injury ain't real, but however, if, if this pig could fly, if hell froze over, okay, if politicians could tell the truth, then we know where maybe the injury happened is at this alleged cookout where they was having dogs and burgers. Now, he could have 
did one of those old OJ commercials where he was leaping over stuff. I should have put that in the video. You know what? At the time this video posted, it might be at the front, it might be at the beginning as a commercial. So if it is, shout out to that killer, OJ. So if you've seen the old OJ commercials where he's jumping up over things and 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 hurdling uh, benches and pews and things of that nature, I could see Phil doing that when somebody goes, all right, come and get it. You know the Underfaker is going to make it. He's going to rise from his grave, a.k.a. his seated position because he wasn't doing flag football. If anything, he was the guy holding the flags and was put, they'd give it to him if one gets tore up or mangled and he'd re velcro it. That's probably what he was doing. But anyway, I, but I tell you what, he was the first to get that first hamburger and hot dog. Phil, how you already back in the line? You just got the last one. This ain't gonna last me at least 10 minutes. You know, you could tell he made it on that one. And that was full contact. He knocked over somebody's grandma. Ran, you know he ran over little girls because you know he doesn't. You know he's scared of women. And I guarantee you, he pushed the elderly out the way. Oh, y'all ain't gonna live long. Y'all ain't got no teeth. You can't eat these sucking delicious hamburgers. Oh, we. That was the first time in Phil's life he had real physical contact. Because it was at a picnic that somehow somebody felt sorry for him. Say, hey, man, come on, Phil, you can come to us because your parents paid us like $100 to get you out of the house for, for you know an hour so they can cry and try to see if they can move away. without. So when you come back, they're gone. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, Philip. They, they wanted me to hide that from you. Somebody might have paid, you know, his parents could have paid somebody to say, hey, look, please take my child. He sucks. You got to take him away from us. Me and my wife, we've got to figure out a plan how to get him out. of. Who knows? But we know he ain't got no friends. We know he ain't got no friends. He would charge people to be his friend. We know that. We ain't got no friends. So this alleged picnic was a paid holiday for his parents. It had to be. Anyway, let's take let's keep listening to Phil's lie and see what else he comes up with. Flag football, high impact eating at a picnic. Come on, Philip. Much more athletic person than I certainly I am now. And all of a sudden, after this, this, this session of flag football, I went home and I laid down. I said, flag football session. Remember, high impact, physically demanding. Philip, how did you get to this point? How did you get to this point playing flag football, man? This ex this extremely stressful flag football. Now the injury happened when you tried to get the hamburgers and fries and the dogs and things that. That's where the injury happened. When they asked you to sub a guy because a guy actually twisted his ankle and say, "Phil, we need a guy. Just, man, just stand there." You know, they didn't even give him any flags because they know he wasn't going anywhere. So it was kind of like they, they it's kind of like putting a department building in the middle of the ocean. It ain't going nowhere. So then the other guy is like, look, man, I know y'all a guy down. Well, we're going to hold a guy here. Just to, he was like the marker. So everybody would run to, and, and and look at the left and what right of field. And know what? That's what we got to stand. That's what he was. He was pretty much a glorified cone. You know, little orange cones that they put on the football field. <laughs> He's an orange cone in the middle of this whole game while grown children <laughs> are playing flag football. And he's standing there eating hot dogs and hamburgers in his hand as he's acting as a as a pylon for the goalposts. OK, so that's that's that is the most strenuous he's done. Oh, my God. What happened? My back is really really in pain like sharp shooting nerve pain all right we have to say it again what causes herniated discs see this is where the video was having so many issues i recovered the video and i just i'm so sorry guys i had to get the video out to get over this hump this was more like a shooting slump or like when a football player just can't make a tackle to save his life I just had to get the video out. So a lot of the stuff's out of whack. Please forgive me, but I have to push through this video to get it out. Um, I, I Please forgive me. I pray the commentary is still insightful. Um, so please forgive me, but I had to get this video across because otherwise trying to get around it wasn't working.
It just doesn't work to try to, uh, well, let me make these because these are cheap. They, they, making fun videos are funny to do, but for me and for you guys, you aren't here for that. So as much as they are a good cleansing of the palate, they also are stitching together time where I can put together uh, a longer video to deep dive into the sender's commentary. So, yeah, we, the video had to come out and it has to be, it had to ultimately be this one. This is the one I wanted to do when I, when I came across it. So it had to happen. So excuse me for the little edit mishaps here and there. This is the original video without the commentary put with it. So now we're redoing it and the commentary is on it, which is because you hear me talking right now. And here we go. So please forgive me, but let's keep rolling. So remember, herniated disc, occupations with individuals with physically demanding jobs and pastimes, physically demanding pastimes. I don't think you can ever put flag football and physically demanding in the same sentence unless everyone is either in wheelchairs did have severe disabilities and i'm not making fun of those uh people that are afflicted with such things that is not my intention i'm just saying that may be of strenuous um that may be strenuous to those who are suffering real physical disabilities Philip's only physical disability is his laziness. And that's not a disability, that's a choice. He actively refuses to do anything that causes him to move around, be physically exertive, and things of that nature. He simply is lazy. Physical demanding involving pushing, pulling, twisting or prone to herniated disc. Ooh, well, Eric, there's pulling right there. That seems physically demanding. Can anybody think of a physically demanding pulling? I know uh, up here in Texas, ranching, there's a lot of pulling in that with ropes and, and trying to keep the cattle in and, and bales of hay and things of that nature. There's a lot of rope there. There's even pulling of the chain on the oil rig. You know, when you're out in the oil fields and you're, you're, you're pulling on the uh, the Derek, oh, the Derek is the big thing, but you know, you I don't know that much about, but you pull it on the gears, and there's another guy that's that's wrenching it in and keeping it together. There's a lot of pulling, or big wrenches where you're twisting and pulling on on huge nuts. You got those huge big wrenches that look like you know cartoon man drum. They, they're massive, and they're pulling on those and twisting. You know, maybe being on the, maybe you're loading a FedEx truck and there's some heavy things to move around and you're doing this for 10, 12 hours a day. Or you're moving bricks because, you know, um, my brother-in-law runs a masonry business. So there's a lot of guys and he, he runs to a lot of guys because it's physically demanding. They're moving bricks here to there, here to there. They're on a, sometimes it's an assembly line where they're moving one brick to one guy to one guy to one guy. And this is from sun up to sun down. I get it. What twisting did Philip do? Someone handing him a Coke and him putting it in his, and then him taking from his left hand into his right hand, putting it in his pocket, then asking for another? What kind of pulling is Philip doing when he's pulling an old lady off the bench so he can sit down? What kind of pushing? It Well, was he pushing that child down so he could be first in line? To an event he wasn't invited to. That's about as strenuous as it's going to get. And what did he say after this? This this stressful, this body straining, flag football. Oh my God, I'm in severe pain. How, Philip? How? Let's keep going. That was resonating not only in my back, but all the way down my legs. I was like, what the hell? And it didn't go away. I thought, oh, maybe it's because I was, you know, did this flag football. It didn't go away. It started to get. You notice he is really honed in on his flag football. I don't know if anyone told him about this, but he is really like this. This flag football is important to him. 
for so I you know what I think it's fair to say this is the most exercise he may have ever done in his life ever so this is the only this may be the only time he's telling the truth on a strenuous exercise this may be the only thing he has done physically in his life that he could point to. So maybe this is the one time Phil is telling the truth only in regards to playing touch football. Because he is looking at the camera. Every time he talks about it, he speaks right into it. Maybe this is the only thing he could point to because, I mean, I got this back injury. And I'm thinking he's, now we get to get to the point of video where we're kind of having an idea of what we can come up with. Why, why is he doing this? What would make this man make up a story this ludicrous around flag football and his severe shooting nerve pain and his back is so damaged? It's such a wreck. We start to get to ask these questions. We're starting to get close to an answer, guys. Nurse <laughs> shooting nerve pain that was resonating not only in my back but all the way down my legs. I was like, what the hell? And it didn't go away. I thought, oh, maybe it's because I was, you know, did this flag football. It didn't go away. It started to get worse. It was important to repeat this because I think it's good to see this fool. It started to nag at me. It got to the point at one point, my legs were getting numb. Now that is a huge negative sign that something's going on seriously wrong, okay? There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. Now, right here, we get to see flag football being played by actual athletes. Look at them, they're in shape. Look at the mobility of number one. That's a pump fake. That's a great fool. That's kind of a weird looking throw, but Look at this, look at the men. These are good, strapping, well-built, athletic men. Look, you think Phil could do this? Pick your, pick anybody on this field and see if we can put Phil. Is Phil the referee? No, the referee's in shape. Is Phil the one making that, trying to hit that guy? That's physical contact. Phil ain't go, ain't nobody throwing no football to Phil. He's got, he's got hands of grease. He's been eating hamburgers all the, Phil ain't running that fast. That's not Philip right there either. That, that 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 guy's in shape. That guy, look at that is not. Look, there's a referee. Wait, wait, wait. There's a referee. He looks like Philip. Look at look. He's got a. Well, wait a minute. He's about to. Nope. He's about to start running. So nope. That's not him. So look look at the guys right here. Any one of them. Look at any one of them is Philip. Can any one of them be of him? That guy's in shape. Looks like a budget. Uh, budget Odell Beckham Jr. So look at this. And I'm playing this video to say, can any one of you guys with a straight face say see any of these as Philip? That's an overweight. That's a man with a little bit of belly. You know, he's a little bit uh, getting later in life, just like myself. But he's active because you got to run up the field with these guys. Can anyone see Philip do any one of these three of these three people? He's not. Th look at the referee stopping on a dime. Look at that. That's skill for the ref. Can we give a shout out to the referee? Look at that posture the referee's in. Now, that's physically demanding. Here we go. Here's another play. Phillip can't hike because look at the bending at the, at the center. Here's the guy rotating to the left, making this god awful ugly throw. Now, there is one position Philip could do on this whole field. Actually, two I pick out. There are two positions, maybe three. I do see a third. Now, if you can, take your eyes all the way to the left. You see that young man holding that yellow-looking flag marker? I mean, that orange flag marker there? That, was, that could be Philip. He's out of the area of the action. It calls, he, he doesn't have to do any strenuous exercises. And, well, wait a minute. He is the guy that walks the marker, so maybe. So, yeah, we no, that guy walks the marker uh, up to, down the field to mark, you know, five yards. So, nope, that couldn't be Phillips. So, we got, sorry, guy on the left, we got to go. 
Let's go all the way to the right. And there's a guy with an umbrella, more than likely someone taking photos or pictures, and they're kind of swollen. Maybe that could be Philip. However, there is a problem in that. Why? Because we see some steps. We know Phil ain't going up and down those steps. We know he ain't getting no umbrella because the umbrella calls you to carry something. We know he's too lazy for it. And it, it, look at the distance from, the, from that building on the left to here. Ain't no way Phil walking that distance. So, yep, sorry guy with that. That's going to ax that out. The last place that I'm sure Philip could have been during, if this was, if we go back into his history and his his time as a youth, you know, which this injury probably happened three days ago. I'm just kidding. It probably happened a while back. However, it's going to be where the injury would have occurred. It's not on the ten yard line. Not where the young man holding the orange marker on the left is. Not the not the, not the man that's on the ramp that goes up with the umbrella. Where probably they're taking pictures because you know the ca cameras at this time might have been a little heavy for him. So the only place the injury could have could have legally, legitimately happened is at the food cart at the upper left in that white gazebo. Because you notice the Budweiser sign on the left, and then you notice to the right, there's a little food stand. That's where the injury happened. That's where Grandma got pushed down. That's where the little girl got pushed down. That's where the burgers, dogs, and everything else, where he lunged to get them before everybody else could. That's where the injury could have happened. That's where the injury had to happen. And let's keep going. That's exactly where it happened right there. So look at these men. Athletic. Look at that. Can anybody say that that's Phillip? No. None of that's Phillip. So this is a guy just intercepted the ball. That ain't Phillip trying to make the touch. That ain't, can you see Philip trying to be this athletic and mobile? That ain't Philip holding that ball like some black like basket of bread. Look at that dude. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. That is not Philip. None of those guys. Philip has never done that ever. In the, so I ended up going to the no. doctor for it. Doctor originally gives me x ray. I don't see anything. It's like, well, Doc, guess what? Obviously. The x-ray is not the right test for this particular problem because I am in excruciating pain all the time. So I think you maybe you should run some more tests. The doctor was actually just going to let it fucking go. Unbelievable. So the doctor says, all right, I'm going to give you an MRI. So, puts me to the so here's the arrogance and stupidity of this situation. So doctor says, yeah, I'm, let me give you an x-ray to find out what's going on. Phil... Um, Phil goes on this says, uh, he was, and because remember he has to, um, he has to, of course, insult the doctor and go about and, and go in his, his way. Cause he knows what's best for himself. So, um, check this out. These are ways that a, that a, a herniated disc can be found and can be searched for. So, the very first test given is an x-ray. Anybody that's ever had an injury of any sort, whether it's been work-related or outside, right? They always start with what? An x-ray. It's basic. It's there to eliminate problems. It can also see anything else that could be causing this shooting nerve pain. If there's a, there's a problem with the spine, this is the very first test that they use in their toolbox to eliminate possibilities. Next is the MRI, which is more in depth. That's where you start getting to see if there's anything like compression to the spine, uh, damage to, to actual vertebrates and things of that nature. It's now looking for something that's more, more outwardly severe that they could see. Next is the ultrasound. After that, you got computed tomography, blood tests, biopsy, positive emission topography. Don't know what that is. Mammography, colonos, you kind of get the you, you kind of get it. This is where all of these things will go on. So when Phil rolled up in here walking just fine, probably was holding his disc uh, allegedly through his stomach because he was hungry. Goes in here, tells the doctor, I got uh I got I think I, I got this severe back injury where my legs are tingling and I'm in the worst pain ever. And the doctor's like, Philip, well, what were you doing? I was playing flag football.
that pause is because that's probably the doctor going, wait, what? Flag football. Did you take a hit? No, doctor. Were, did you make a wild twist by using in between men, maybe? No, doctor. Hmm. Did you fall awkwardly like maybe eight or ten times during this flag football? Was it particularly rough? Was Were you hitting people? Was it a lot of collision? No. Philip, how could it have happened? I don't know. It was gradual. I just went, I got up one day. Uh, my parents said, hey, get out of the house. Here's a hundred bucks. Pay. Here, give it to Willie Jones. Willie Jones will take it and he's going to take you to the family picnic. Whose family? Not our family, Philip. So you go ahead and go with Willie Jones, the only black friend he had at the time. And I lose friend loosely. He was just a brother they paid that also cut the yard because Philip ain't cutting people's yards. This guy was actually doing like, you know, actually doing labor and chores because he was a responsible adult. So pays Willie Jones, give him, give him a hundred dollars to Willie Jones. And you know, his dad slapped him in his face when he did it. Like, here, take this boy and give that to that boy outside. Tell him I like him a lot, boy. Tell him I wish I could, I could, I could take him and trade you in for a better model. Now, you know, that, I'm not saying the dad was that abusive, but you know, his dad probably was like, man, look at this. Get out of here. Give this hundred dollars to Willie Jones and get the hell out of here. Me and your mama got to discuss what to do with you when you get back. So, Philip goes with Willie Jones. Willie Jones takes that hundred dollars and slaps Philip in the head, back of the head, and they go to the picnic. Okay, they don't have time to, to when one guy's injured, they don't have time to sub, so they get Phil to go in there to be the pylon. Case closed. So the doctor's trying to figure out where did this injury happen? How did you do it? Philip doesn't have a credible reason to come up with this injury. Now we get back to the very same question that I posed in the beginning: Why would he do this? I have some ideas, and I'm sure you do too. Maybe his parents is asking him to do something that he doesn't want to do that causes him to be physically active. Philip, you living in this house. You must do something other than sit in your room, burn through our groceries, and complain that you're not getting while we having pizza three nights in a row. Your mama's tired and you ate us out of everything else. So we figure let's get you some food that's fat and put your ass to sleep. And then we can go out and do and have a regular family life. That, that probably didn't happen, but well, maybe it did. But we do know this. I can say this without a doubt. His dad probably got, look, son, you're too damn old. Well, you're, old, you're young enough to still be in my house. But you're too damn old not to be doing nothing like yard work or washing dishes. You're going to go outside and put this fence in. Who knows? But whatever his parents were asking him, that was going to be physically demanding. And he simply didn't want to do it. This flag football was a prime time to pull this lie. And can you imagine amongst younger Phil telling a grown ass man, a doctor, mind you, I don't think this is the right test to run. As if Philip, I guess he saw enough Gray's Anatomy in his life to think or St. Elsewhere, Doogie Hauser, ER, you name it, that he could diagnose himself and figure that out. We know this story's a lie. We know this story's a lie. How you gonna tell a doctor what you think he, the doctor knows what he's doing. Philip, your spine is so damn straight. It actually is the reason I could line the x-ray machine because you've done nothing to damage it. I also noticed these yellow flecks in it. So are you cowardly? Yes. All of that answers to yes. MRI machine scans me all that. The footage coming up is, uh, is from Bob and Brad. Uh, they're they're a pretty well known um, orthopedic and uh, they're surgeons. Very comical guys, but very informative. They definitely can speak a language of how uh, things injuries can happen. I've watched a lot and, and consumed a lot of their content. Um, so just give a shout out to them in the sub if you're interested in how injuries happen and things of that nature. Um, so I just had to preface that in there. Urgently, two days later. Okay, come back. Oh my God, your MRI shows that you have a severe
severely herniated disc between your L4, L5 vertebrae. So listen to this. He just said, while well, I was bumping my gums, he was basically saying after the, the after they gave him an MRI, which is an expensive and expensive test to run. That is not cheap. It is by no means just easily gone into. And look, let's be honest. It ain't just something people will want to do. It's just doctors don't just roll out there and do it because it is pricey it could be anywhere from four hundred dollars at the at the at the lighter end to as much as thirty five hundred dollars the doctor was gonna let it go because his parents ain't got that kind of money over a fake ass injury of course they that doctor's like dude uh i know the brunells i know they lying ass son no way i'm gonna do it but if he's insisting and Mama Brunel loves her baby boy and she raises a stink and the dad's at work and he wasn't there to say, no, not I, Nathan, the boy is okay. Get his pudgy self out this office so I ain't got to pay no more uh, co-pays. That's probably what happened. So now they got this up to $3,500 MRI. And listen to this. The story is, oh my God. You have the most severely damaged herniated disc I have ever seen. Again, let's look at this. MRI, the most common and accurate imaging test for a suspected herniated disc is an MRI. X-rays, getting x-rays helps rule out other causes of back injury or neck pain. Computed tomography, a scan that shows the bones of your spine. Again, we see the other ones. Other exams to diagnose lumbar herniated disc, neurological checks, range of motion tests, leg raise tests, vital sign check, gait monitoring, lumbar spare area exam. Again, all these probably happened with the x-ray. And when they did the, the neurological check, we all, yeah, that looking at his nerves and things of that nature, range of motion tests. Leg raise says, I guarantee you, the doctor saw a scam. Now, either two things happened with this doctor. He was either unethical and just wanted to, to, to rake the Brunells over the coals to get their money. Or number two, Mama Brunell forced the issue after he probably passed all of these physical exams. Has to be one of the two. If he's unethical and he's saying, man, I can get money out of these suckers. Their son's an idiot and he thinks he's injured and he's not. I'm going I'm to make all the money I can off them. And since their dad is not here, because I know his dad will raise holy hell, I'm going to rake Mama Brunel over the coals. She insists on it. I'm just her doctor. I'm following what I'm supposed to do. That's a good likely scenario. If the MRI was indeed ordered. If you're on the latter end, he knows it's a uh, he knows it's a scam, and he goes, "Look, this is not cool. I'm not go I'm not gonna put this poor family through unnecessary tests." And goes on. Now, I, I, that's not I'm not being fair. There is a third option that Philip is actually telling the truth. He, he's he's <clears throat> injured. So he complained, he says something that triggers a doctor. Maybe the doctor is ethical. And he goes, you know, that does, there could possibly, I don't, just for me, because I'm a good doctor. I know this kid smells like Funyuns. I know that the idea that this kid getting physically injured and having a herniated disc is so rare. And so it is so idiotic to believe it could happen. However, if the remote chance, I do not want to be responsible for giving this kid a, a hard life living and go out the door undiagnosed or have a bad diagnosis. He's in pain and I could you know damage this kid. He can care that much and go ahead and order the MRI. So just a quick look at, again, what There's causes it. Of, uh, that. This is Bob and Brad. Now, look at that yellow line is a nerve, okay? So where the L4 and L5, where Philip is saying he was injured, this is a map of what that looks like, okay? So here's a, a skeleton of it, and he's going to be talking about where the damage and what would cause this 
nerve pain, which is going to be the sciatic, the sciatic nerve. Any woman that actually has injuries, have ever had uh, babies, things of that nature, that sciatic nerve pain is ridiculously painful. And worse off, the, the, the inflammation of that nerve on the low, there's really not pain that, that targets necessarily nerves in a way that can give you instant relief. It can tone down the volume a little. But for hours on hours sitting down on your butt, notice he's not complaining at all. And sciatic nerve pain don't just go away. They just don't magically disappear because you move across the country. Doesn't work. Injuries don't work that way. The fact that he drove that entire time ended up in Washington and he's there. And well, maybe it's that fresh Washington air. Are there nanites in the air? Is that Washington air got Wolverine healing factor in it? What is in that water that could heal him to where he can sit on a stream for 10 to 12 hours, seven damn days a week and not show signs of a lingering sign of a supposedly severely herniated disc? Nerve. Now, if you look here, this red bulge is a model, Sam's model of a bulging or herniated disc. Right. That's what Philip is saying he has. And watch, listen. Uh, this would have to be right here. And you can see where that would push into the nerve, irritating the nerve and creating those symptoms. So the whole goal is to get that bulge out of there without surgery, which is uh, not always, but it can be possible through therapy. The body wants to heal. And if this thing were to... Did you notice that? Now look at Philip. Look at what he's using. Is there any surprise on that? Is there any surprise he researched this so he can give this fake story? Because remember when he said, the guy that asked this question, shout out to him. I don't know if he was a, a, a detractor or he was legitimately asking, but you notice he asked Philip to explain it again. Philip rocked back and forth as if he had to remember this story. So here he is describing it, right? He's done research into it because this is how he had to pull it together. Here, look at look at the same gestures, right? Same gestures. And and listen, remember, it's so severe, so life threatening to his life, his way, his way of life. Let's keep listening. Uh, number one, I could be crippled. Number two, I could lose uh, control of my bowels. That's and true. To the point, he said it was so bad that thank god i caught it when i did because if i didn't and this thing had popped this disc that i could have been fucked for life okay a ruptured disc causes severe low back pain and sometimes shooting pain down the back of the legs which is known as sciatica usually the symptoms of disc rupture heal on their own after a few weeks to a month if the problem persists for months and becomes chronic you may choose to eventually consider surgery no danger Look this up for yourself. He was in no shape, form, or fashion in any crippling, effed for life moment with a ruptured, exploded disc. Painful, yes. Severely painful, yes. Sciatica, yes. Heal on their own with therapy. Now, bulging discs, a herniated disc, we just saw with therapy, we can get it pushed back in. Ruptured disc, it's beyond that point, and yet a few weeks to a month. Your body and your body knows how to heal. It just needs a little bit of assistance from us, to either rest, rehab, good dieting. Your body will God built the human body pretty darn good. When he says back in Genesis that, you know, I'll make man in my image, what he meant by that was not making us like him, but he made a perfect body. If you really think of the human body, it's pretty amazing to think that this intricate universe of, of skin, blood, cells, all the things that makes up the human body. 
And the fact that they call it a doc, why they, you know why they call it a doctor's practice? Because the human body is still one of those things to where it is so unique, so amazing that no two bodies are alike. One doctor may see one thing and the same exact patient with the same type of lifestyle could have completely different uh, symptoms to something of the same nature that the injury of the first guy saw. This is the human body at its best and at its worst, of course. It's so amazing about this. So my mother, I have a, I have a testimony about this. My mother, um, when she, she actually suffered through a, um, a mild, well, I, I, what the doctor told me, she suffered a mild heart attack, but the heart attack actually caused a lot of, so she started having heart, uh, basically her, uh, one of, she had some several blockages in her heart. So she was in a hospital and that's what she went for initially before they found out she had cancer. Uh, which I think my mother hid it from us for the sake she didn't want us to worry. So you know how parents don't want their children to worry about them. God bless her, rest her soul. Um, the thing that I found amazing was, so they told her we're going to have to put us, we're going to have to uh, do a bypass. We're going to do a, a, a triple bypass on your mother's heart. Uh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, double bypass. Yeah, double bypass. Uh, her anniversary is coming up in January of, of her passing to the Lord. Um, so with that being said, I remember... Uh, the day we was, we was getting it prepared and she was, they were wheeling her down and she's still making jokes with the doctor and the nurse uh, that were there. And then we, I go into the upper waiting room um, to get to basically to wait on the surgery. Cause I was going to say, how long is it going to take doc? Oh, it's going to take a couple of hours or more. Um, we can let you know when it's done. I said, no, I'm staying. Right. So I, I, I'm out of work at this time. I applied for FMLA when I was working at Walmart at the time. And so I'm with my mother all the time now. So that way I could be there whenever she needed it. And just to be visited her because, you know, let's be honest, this is your mother. You know, you want to be there for them, um, especially when she's, you know, on her last days. Um, we still had hope that she could at least come home and maybe, you know, do be at this point, have some, that she wanted to be at home. So no matter what, um, long story short, uh, they wheeled my mother in. I'm sitting down. And my father's there literally within about maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they're wheeling my mom back out. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? The doctor that they took test the other day, um, they come back. Her heart had made its own stents or whatever. Her heart did the work over time. And they said, quote, it was probably due more than likely to your mother's active lifestyle. Because at this time I had my dog Jack before he passed this year. He had my mom running up and down the neighborhood. When I got her, she just got forced in retirement and she was pretty much just sitting in the house and she go outside and garden. My mom was always a very active woman, but she was very depressed at this time because Hey, let's be honest. When you, when you're poor, we're living in the hood. You get laid off. Well, you get laid off. You get you get retired. Well, forced retirement, which is pretty much laid off, right? And she's trying to make ends meet. This that the nature. She's a proud woman. You know, she wants to take care of herself. And my mom was very scared of getting old. You know, that was a very real fear for her. And I, it it, it was interesting to to kind of go, to navigate that to see how, you know, she went from being this very physically imposing five foot two woman you know to you know uh not being as active or not having places to go and do those things to keep herself moving she was very concerned about her health so anyway um her heart made its own ability to it, it had its, it made its own stint so it didn't have to do anything and I remember the doctor was like, that is that, that I've, I was like, have you ever seen that? He says, yeah, I've seen that happen when someone is active. They may have a stroke, which my mom later, we found out she did, or they have a heart attack and they don't know it. You know, they go to a doctor, they, the, the, they go to a the doctor, they, they're complaining of chest pain. The doctor doesn't, you know, doesn't diagnose it correctly. Send the patient home saying, oh, you just need some rest or whatnot and blah, blah, blah. And so the heart does it. it God and his wisdom and mercy built this amazing physical body to where it made its own stint and this wasn't exclusive to my mother at all this happens because as the doctor says your body wants to heal 
physical exercise, your body loves it. Your body wants to run. Your body wants to move. Your body wants to just keep pushing and pushing. Your body enjoys labor. It does. That's why you have people getting addicted to the gym. It isn't just because of the immediate effects of getting physically fit and seeing how yourself look in the mirror. Yeah, that's a great benefit. That's also a sign of what? You're working out and it becomes a habit and you enjoy it. You see a lot of these streamers that are online, they're actually, they're streaming maybe two or three or four hours, right? Whatever, but they're active. They're doing something. They have second income streams. They're out there. They're, they're, they're athletic. They're, or maybe they're not. Maybe they're, they're not on the side of looking like the Pauls They're not looking like the, the, you know, the, the physically fit guy. There's some average Joes, but they're active somewhere. They got good metabolism. Why? You can have a good metabolism just by how eating right or not abusing your body, not willfully wanting to be lazy. You know what Phil's day off consists of? The same thing you see him doing on his streams, nothing. If anything, his day off is telling his wife what needs to be done. That's it. That's exactly what he's doing. In no time, at no time ever has Philip ever been in a situation where he is in some dire, hurting pain. Just doesn't happen. Not when it comes to Philip. This whole story doesn't make any sense. This entire story makes no freaking sense. It, it just don't. A ruptured disc causes severe low back pain and sometimes shooting pain down the back of the legs, which is known as sciatica. Usually the symptoms of the disc rupture heal on their own. And he's trying to tell us that the doctor called with this urgent message. Phil, you're gonna, your whole life's going to explode. You're going to be crippled for life. You're going to be screwed over if you don't come in here and get some physical therapy. That's Philip. So, gee, Doc, good thing we went for the MRI instead of just passing on the fucking uh, the X-ray and pretending like nothing was wrong. That's a lie. See his, see his? Did you see his eyes? His whole mannerism in that lies. He didn't tell it to the doctor. His mama begged him, "Please, Doc, I don't need my boy to be disabled." After you know, he explained it, Miss Brunell. It's not that serious. It's ruptured. It's got to be bad. Miss Brunell, it's not like that. It's a ruptured disc. Yes, it, it is an injury. Yes, ma'am. But it heals over. No, my son's going to be in this horrible pain. And Phil's crying, slobbering mustard and stuff down his face. He's upset. He's crying. And, and his mama's, oh, please, doctor, you got to do the Okay, okay, okay. I'll do the MRI. They call a few days later. Miss, Miss, Miss Brunell, um... Uh, it is a ruptured disc. Oh, my God, my son's going to die. He's going to be in a wheelchair. No, ma'am, he just needs to uh, go to physical therapy. It Usually this kind of injury uh, heals itself over time. It feels stays active. And then, well, I can't let him leave the house. He's good. Something could happen. Ma'am, he needs to be physically active. We're going to set him up on a therapy program. Uh, this could heal. At the worst case scenario, it may, it, may take, it may take a few months to heal. But ma'am, this is a common injury. It's not common for my Philip. He is such a good boy. This could hurt him. Ma'am, there's no threat to his life or his, 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 his quality of life with this ruptured disc. It will be uncomfortable. He will have to maintain a good physical regiment so it could strengthen the spine that's what the doctor was telling her and she was panicking so phil telling this lie is just because the doctor said this is a common injury for those doing strenuous exercises so whatever if we go by the assumption philip really got injured how that injury happened he was doing something he shouldn't or something he's not used to like manual labor, his dad had him out there doing some labor, cutting the yard, uh, cutting a tree down, something, and Philip didn't want to do it, and his father gave him an ultimatum, either you do this stuff in here 
or you got a job, then this happened. Prime time, because dad was not watching. Nobody was watching when this injury happened. Dad didn't buy it. Mama bought it. Dad didn't. Oh, the first time I give an ultimatum to him to do something in the house, he injures his back. Yeah, that's probably how that conversation happened. How do you say don't lie to me? Senkajima. 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 <laughs> so, uh, I had some options back then. I was told, well, here's what you could do. You can either... This is what Phil suffers with. And we're almost at the end of the video. Factitious or factitious, <laughs> factitious uh, disorder imposed on self. FIDS, F-D-I-S, is a type of mental disorder in which a person will intentionally cause or create or exaggerate an injury or illness in his or herself. It was formerly referred to as Munchausen syndrome. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys probably heard that and watching a lot of uh, videos and things of that nature or Law and Order. That was a really good uh, episode about that. The lady was making her daughter sick and things of that nature just so she can get attention. What was for the attention for Philip? With those who suffer with this disorder, but Philip, this for one simple reason, he's lazy. This injury is all made up. Or the severity of the injury is made up. That's that's a more likely truth on that. The, the the level of this injury being as bad as it is is made up. We all know that to be true. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out this guy's a liar. He's always been a liar. He has made a career of lying to people who are gullible enough, dumb enough, harmed enough, physically, mentally uh, abused enough to where they listen to this man and they figure I can't make an impact in my life, but I can make an impact to him. And wouldn't you know, what does the Lord have to say about this? Proverbs 13, 5. A righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man acts disgustingly and shamefully. Is this not Phil's life? This is absolutely Philip's life. He does act shamefully. He does act disgustingly. And we can go physically disgusting by looking at his, his burps and <coughs> all this crap on stream. That's disgusting. How they, and that's another thing we got to discuss too. I don't know if anybody ever knows it. He probably has more gastro. He probably has gastro issues. He's always burping, belching. Uh, things like, so we know he's having issues with gas. He probably has acid reflux, thing that nature of how much he's eating. Uh, probably eating, especially eating the wrong foods. But have you noticed? And he's lost weight. So the fact that these things that 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 he hasn't gained much much weight after having these bingeathons when he's not on stream. You know, he's always belching and doing these disgusting things that are in, that are that are indicative of someone that has an ailment, but I think it's more gastro, you know, with the stomach than anything else. One thing we can know for sure is that he acts disgustingly and shamefully. We know that for a fact. He begs and puts burdens on people that he does not help them with. What do I mean by that? They can give money to him, but if Lord for Lord forbid, please Lord don't let it happen. If one of these noodle eaters, Phil, I have a serious issue, man. Let's say OIC, his greatest colon cleaner, his greatest hype man, to Johnny Carson, he's at that OIC is Ed McMahon, the sidekick, a budget version of Robin. You got Sam's Choice Batman is Phil. Then you got Great Value OIC, which is Robin. Okay? If OIC suddenly lost his income and he couldn't support to his love interest, his man crush, Philip, do you think Philip would lift a dime to help OIC pay one bill? Phil, all I need you to help me pay is my phone bill, man. It's only 40 bucks. Philip would say this. You know I'm strapped for cash. 
I don't know why you would ask me such a thing. You know I'm still paying these bulk taxes. I got a bill coming right around the corner. So that's kind of selfish of you to ask me, knowing that's the reason I'm on these streams. Why I got this is a business. I, I really can't afford to do that. I'm sorry. He wouldn't say I'm sorry, but you know what I'm saying? He would turn to, and you know what OIC would do? Oh, I understand, Phil. Let me go sell my, let me go sell one of my aunts or nephews. Let me sell one of my kidneys. And then once I pay that phone bill, I will, no, he might, maybe, maybe it's an AT&T bill. Maybe it's like 60 bucks. So he'll pay some of it, give the rest to Phil, and he puts it on a, a you know, a deferment plan. That's what will happen every time. Philip, there is no giving back from Philip. The only thing you get back from Philip is a, is a, a thriving detractor community. Phil feeds a lot of us. I ain't got no problem with that. Because we also get to teach others what not to do as a streamer. What to look out for on scams. You know the one thing about the detractor community I think people might overlook. These guys, if they ever turned their, their spotlights to scammers, scam artists like guys that do on the phone calls and things of that nature. These guys would be more, they're, they're be more valuable than the very uh, FCC and all these companies trying to stop these scammers. These guys would tear these scammers apart. Phil better, Phil just happens to be the character study of what not to do. And their work of warning others not to fall victim to this is amazing. And my hats go off to them. I love them for that. So I got to cut the video here. It's, it, it has ran long. It's that by that's back to its hour length. Uh, for the, I, I lost a few subscribers because they believed I lost my way and I went back the route of what a typical detractor does by just making videos, laughing at Phil and making fun of Phil. Again, I don't make any excuses about about why I made those videos in between because they were meant for one thing to cleanse and have a good time. I admit, yes, that's true, but I will never get away from being a Christian first, first and foremost. I want everybody to know you are following a man that believes deeply convicted in his Bible. I believe God is real. I believe Christ is the savior of all those who look upon him and repent. All these things are uncompromising, unwavering, and it changes nothing just because I'm part and in, in taking part in the detract community. More so, it gives me a responsibility that I have to show you why Philip is doing these things and why it is hard for people to break away from it and why people flock to it. Remember, this man's got over 90,000 plus followers. You don't get that unless there are genuine people. Now, I'm sure there are bots, there are trolls, and there are supporters. I bet you there are more supporters in there or maybe a good ratio of supporters and trolls and detractors than anything else. There's some bots, but that's a good matter. That's still a lot of people that follows a man that is disgustingly, shamefully wicked, who lies, and he reaps the benefits of it. Think about that for a second. I got my little channel of 600 folks, which I enjoy my community. I love us. I will never, ever in a million years want to trade that for anything more than a, a young man said yesterday, Eric, don't ever become to, to get to where you outgrow us. Or take us for granted. That was an amazing one. Another one was a young man thought I had lost my way. It was like, man, I came to you for insight, and I'm disappointed in you. And I and I that I took that to heart. That hurt my heart because he I, I didn't want to I didn't want him to think that I gave up. But you know what? That's how easy it is for you to lose respect for someone um, when you when you start out and you start to learn something and you don't stay consistent to the very thing you do. You know when and I've been given I've been entrusted with this by God. So. And you guys have trusted me, whether you believe the way I do or not, you have come to trust me that that this content would stay consistent. And it will. I've been doing this way longer than you guys have known about me. That doesn't give me the right to take that for granted. It just gives me a greater responsibility to present the truth to you. And maybe a little bit of comedy, too, with my sense, with my sense of humor and my outlook. I don't rub well with religion. I don't rub well with theologians. I don't rub well with the ties and suits and all. To hell with those guys. I'm here to tell you the facts, the truth of God, and what a Christian life looks like. I got no time to sell you a dream that I know doesn't exist. 
You get the straight dope on what a Christian a Christian perspective is, how God sees things, what the Bible says, and that's it. I got nothing else to offer except some fun and hopefully some good candid content. So if you like this kind of content, guys, I ask you, please support the channel. Like, share, subscribe. It matters. The one way to get Philip's attention and the entirety of these low cows and the only way to get their attention is by raising the channel up to where they can't ignore us. They can all, oh, Eric's just 600 He's just 600 Nobody cares about what he has to say. When you start getting to the thousands, where the algorithm really starts to, to kick in as the, as the content's relevant to what people are searching for, then they have no choice but to address it. And addressing me, I guarantee you, that's going to light a fire that they are not prepared for. I, I'm not that guy. Almighty Tevin, God bless that brother. I'm a different cat. I'm a different cat. I will light their world up. And all I'm going to do is, is try to help them get to understand, this, this is where you're at, man. This is who you are. And this is how it can change. This is how you can double, triple your subscriber count. Or you can turn subscribers into friends and family. One of those two can come out of it. But these men, these women, like Philip, create and live and thrive on a toxic community that supports their weak, mentally fragile egos. And I'm here to take the rest of that down with my hammer. I'll break it all down. Because the Lord did it to me, and I desperately need it, and I still need it daily. I never rest on the fact that, well, I've came up here. I finally, no, no, I'm constantly. That's why I take y'all's criticism to heart. I don't tell you to go to hell and all oh, whatever. You don't understand. This is what is Christian. No, no, I take that in. If there's something, there's something that's just a blatant attack on my character. Fine. Throw that out. If I hear something in there that resonates and go, you know what? That is true. I did exhibit that. I'm going to take that in. And I'm going to thank the person who had that courage to say it because not a lot of people do it. There's a lot of silent majority that just joins. They, they subscribe to a channel. They never interact in the way that we would want them as a streamer. But you know what? They can show their support by simply unsubscribing. I was at 630 and, and, and last two days I lost three subscribers. My heart hurt. They could have been bots. Sure. They could have been a troll that hope I was going to be even more savage in roasting Philip. True. But if it was those three people lost faith in me because they saw the last two videos and said, man, he ain't no different than anybody else. That hurts my heart. So if you guys watch this content that that's unsubscribed to my channel, again, if I can appeal to you, ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing will change. And you have every right to call me to the fire when you think it does. I ask, I implore, I beg you to do so. I beg you, my own community now, and I may say my own. I don't mean my own like I own you guys, but God has blessed me with you guys. And I can lose all of you in a heartbeat. So I am thankful. I walk this fine line and I walk it gladly. So I love you very much, guys. Please uh, subscribe to the channel, like and share, leave a comment. I love reading my comments. I just don't give the BS like and love, I mean, like and love. I like to say something that's pointed at the time. Most of the time I'm, I'm answering is at work where I get a lot of my comments from. When I get at home, it's not very many, but what it is, I can get more of an in-depth uh, answer or go back to reflect to see what I can add to it. So your comments are amazing. They're encouraging. I take my 600 and put up against anybody's million any day and we'll come out on top, baby. I know we will because we're all in this one, in this boat together. We all, we may not believe the same, but we definitely believe the same when it comes to people acting rightly and morally. So I love you guys. I see you guys soon. Uh, it's Christmas Eve. So tomorrow I have a Bible, a Bible special. It's going to be controlling the narrative. That's my other series that I use that 100% concentrates on the, um, the false birthday of Christ, including why people worship on Sunday. So love you very much, guys. See you soon in Jesus name. Amen. Oh yeah. Amen.